This is part 41 of Angular Grad tutorial. In this video, we will discuss how to read route parameter values in Angular 2 and later versions. Let's understand this with an example. At the moment, our list employees component displays the list of all available employees and when we click on any employee, that specific employee ID is passed in the URL as a route parameter. Now what we want to be able to do is read the employee ID from the URL and then retrieve that specific employee details using our employee service and then display those details right here. Now if we take a look at our employee service, notice we have this get employees method which returns us the list of all available employees. Now we want another method which is going to return us employee by ID. So let's make a copy of this and then change the bits that are required. First of all, the name of the method is going to be get employee and it's going to return a single employee and not an array. And we want to pass this method the ID of the employee that we want. And then to get that employee by ID, we are going to use the find method. We want an employee whose ID equals the ID that we are passing in. And notice here we are using triple equals to check both for the value and the type. So this completes the change required in our employee service. Next, from our employee details component, we want to read this route parameter value. Reading route parameters is easy. Angular provides a service for that and that service is called activated route service. So for us to be able to use that service, we'll have to first import it. So let's import activated route service from Angular router package. Now to be able to use this activated route service, we'll have to first inject it into our component using the component constructor. So let's create a private field. I'm going to name it underscore route. And the type of this is activated route, which we have just imported. Now using this private field underscore route, we can very easily read the route parameter values. We're going to do that within this ng on init lifecycle hook. We have discussed lifecycle hooks in detail in our Angular 2 course. So if you're new to lifecycle hooks, please check out our Angular 2 course. I'll have the link available in the description of this video. Now let's use this private field underscore route to read the route parameter values. Notice when I press dot on the route object, we have this property params. And if I have the mouse over this params property, notice what it returns. It's actually returning an observable. So one way to read the route parameter values is by subscribing to this observable. We'll discuss this observable approach in our next video. In this video, we'll discuss the other approach and that approach is the snapshot approach. Notice now when I type dot on the route object, we have another property and that property is the snapshot property. And on this, we have the params property. So now to be able to read this route parameter value, we have to specify its name. Remember when we defined this route in our root module file, that is an app.module.ts file, we specify the name of this route parameter as ID. So we have to use the same name to read that parameter value. So back in our employee details component, we specify the name of the parameter as ID right here. And by default, this is going to return the value as a string. So we need to convert that to a number. We do that by using the plus symbol. And then let's create a constant and store the parameter value in that constant. Now let's use this ID and retrieve that specific employee details using our employee service. So we need to inject our employee service also into our component class. Let's do that within our constructor. I'm going to name the private field underscore employee service. And the type of this is employee service. We don't have this service imported yet. And that's the reason we see that red squiggle. We can take the help of Visual Studio Code Editor to automatically include the required import statement for us. We do that by pressing the control and period keys simultaneously. Notice now we have this import option right here. When I click on this, the required import statement is automatically included right here. And also notice the red squiggle has disappeared. 
Now let's use this employee service to retrieve employee by ID. We know the service has got get employee method. We need to pass it the ID of the employee. We have that in this constant, so let's pass that. And this method is going to return us an employee. So within our component, let's create a property. I'm going to name it employee and the type of this is employee. Again, we don't have this type, so let's import the employee type. And we are going to store the employee returned by our service in this employee property. Now, if we take a look at what our employee details component is doing, it's simply displaying this message, employee details works. At the moment, we are able to read the ID value from the URL, and we are also able to retrieve that specific employee details. All that is left to do is display the employee details. Now to speed things up, I'm going to reuse the HTML and CSS we have in our display employee component. Let's paste this HTML within our employee details component view template. So instead of employee details works, let's replace that with the HTML we have just copied. And notice it's binding to the employee property and within our employee details component class, we already have the employee property. Now let's save all our changes and see what we get. Notice the image is too big. This is because we are missing some of the styles. We'll copy those styles in just a bit. But before that, let's quickly test our application to make sure it works as expected. When I click on Mark, whose ID is 1, the ID is passed correctly in the URL. We see Mark details as expected. Similarly, when I click on John, John's ID is 3, and we also see John's details. Now let's copy those styles. Let's copy the styles from display employee component CSS file and paste them within our employee details component CSS file. Notice now the image size is reduced as expected. Now let's include a footer for this bootstrap panel and in the footer, let's include back to list button. Let's open our employee details component view template. And we have our panel body div right here. After the panel body, we want panel footer. So just after panel body div, let's include another div element. And to get a panel footer, all we have to do is include the bootstrap class panel dash footer. Instead of using a button, I'm going to use an anchor element and style it using bootstrap button classes, btn and btn-primary. And the text on this is going to say back to list. And when we click on this link, what do we want to do? We want to take the user back to the list page. So let's use the router link directive and bind it to the list route. Notice now we have back to list link. When we click this, it takes us back to the list. Now, one question that might come to your mind is why are we not using square brackets when we are using the router link directive? Well, that's because if we are binding to a simple string like this, we don't need to use the square brackets. We need to use the square brackets when we are binding this directive to link parameters array like this or if we are binding to a property within the component class. Since now we are binding to the link parameters array, we have to use the square brackets. If we don't use the square brackets, then it doesn't work. So in Angular, to read route parameter values, there are two options. We can either use the snapshot approach or the observable approach. In this video, we discussed the snapshot approach. In our next video, we will discuss the observable approach. If you are using Angular 2 in your project, then use params property as shown right here. On the other hand, if you are using Angular 4, Angular 5 or even future versions, they introduced a new property called param map. Params have been deprecated since Angular 4. So if you are using Angular 4 or any version beyond it, use param map property instead of params. At the moment, in our project, we're using Angular 5. So let's use param map instead of params. So let's replace params with param map.
parameter has got get method and to the get method we pass the name of our route parameter which is id notice even now our application works exactly the same way as before that's it in this video thank you for watching and have a great day